So we're continuing our month. We, we are celebrating and practicing gratitude. of Little Rock. Wow, it's great to see everyone here this morning. Thank you, music team. Thank you, Tam and Bill and everyone. Glad to see everybody here today. How is everyone this morning? Yeah, feeling good. It's great to be here. I missed you all last week. Uh, you know, a group of us went to Dallas. We went to the Unity Prayer Chaplain's Retreat, and it was totally awesome, I have to say. Uh, we got rejuvenated, inspired, and just filled up with good ideas and, and came back with some excitement and some energy and just ready to, to, to you know, to really do something here in this world, make something happen. And I'm, I know all of you are ready for the same thing. Uh, you know, this is the month of November and it is the month of, of gratitude and it's also the month of, of renunciation or elimination. So, you know, sometimes as we're trying to open our hearts to gratitude, we have to let go and, and eliminate those thoughts and those ideas that, those, that limit us, that hold us back, and that keep us from living at our highest potential and our highest good. So I invite you all to just to kind of do that right now. Take a big, deep breath in and just blow it out. You know, whatever may be holding you back right now, to let it go. I also want to be sure and mention that today is Veterans Day. And uh, so we just want to say a, a, a silent thank you to all of our veterans. Uh, is there anybody here who is a veteran in the audience that we need to? You, Ron's a veteran, and, and Pam's a veteran. Yeah, anybody else? Yeah. So, well, you know, thank you for your service. Let's give the veterans a, a round of applause. You know, I, I, I never had to serve. The, the, the draft ended two months before my 18th birthday. So you know how old I am. So I, and at that time I never served, but I've always been so grateful for, for those who, who, who have in the past and for those who continue to serve today. You know, thank you very much. Let's go ahead and just take a moment to, I like to start with our invocation when I have the opportunity to, to open us up. You know, the invocation that Charles Fillmore gave, and this is the, the Paul Hasselbeck version, but so you know, I am the presence of pure being emanating the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. I am all that God is, expressing at the point of me. And as I express divine wisdom, all thoughts of mortal limitation have no power over me. I am the presence and power of pure love, bringing into manifestation my world according to to divine love. All right, so now let's take a moment. I want all of your divine selves to stand up and greet other divine presences and love, and let's have our meet and greet. So. <laughs> yeah, meet and greet. <laughs>
certainly could use some help with this song since everybody knows it pretty well. Morning has broken like the first morning that bird has spoken like the first bird praise for the singing praise for the morning praise for the springing fresh from the world sweet the rain's new Sundered from heaven Like the first dew Fall on the first grass Praise for the sweetness Of the wet garden Swung in completeness Where his feet pass Mine is the sunlight, mine is the morning, born of blue on light, Eden softly, praise with elation, praise every morning, God's recreation. Of the new day. Thank you. Pam, thank you, Bill. I'm now going to light the Christ candle, which in this case, we're going to turn on the Christ candle. <laughs> I think it's interesting. We even have a little snuffer here. <laughs> so we're, we're carrying that illusion to its limit, you know. It is symbolic, though, of the Christ life that, that shines in each and every one of us. You know, we are this spiritual life, this spiritual being. And this morning, I've got someone. We're going to do our statement of being. And I'm going to ask Ellen to come up. She's going to lead us in this statement of being. Get the microphone here for her. So um, I was one of the fortunate people that got to go to the prayer retreat uh, workshop last weekend and um, on the first night an exercise that we did was something that we wanted to release and we wrote it on a piece of paper and my thing that I wanted to release was fear and part of my fear was getting up in front of everybody and so when I watched that piece of paper we put it into a bowl of water and that word fear sat there on top of the water and then I used a little paddle to stir the water and I just watched it dissolve away and as I watched it dissolve away I felt it dissolve away and so I'm just stepping out here and I'm feeling really really vulnerable right now and so for two reasons I'd like everyone to just stand up with me and give me some love <laughs> thank you thank you thank you and I also want you to stand just to feel the power in our statement of being so just you know ground your feet into the ground and just lift your heart and say it with me I am an individualized expression of God I am ever one with this perfect life perfect love and perfect substance and so it is. Thank you so much. Now, but before you run off, okay. Ellen, hang on just a second. Uh, as y'all know, I want to take a moment to acknowledge Ellen. First of all, she texted me this week and she said, can I get on the platform with you and do the statement of being? And I said, absolutely, that was wonderful. But Ellen has also been serving as our prayer chaplain leader for the last year. And we've just made a rotation. Pat Walls is going to be taking that over, I guess, as December 1st. And I just wanted to present these for you, Ellen, just as an appreciation and a show of our love and our thanksgiving. Thank you. And thank you. 
we just appreciate you being a part of our team. Thank you so much. So. <laughs> <laughs> we are awesome, aren't we? I tell you. So. <sighs> All right. Well, y'all, it's time to kind of bring it in. You know, we've kind of been letting it shout out. We want to bring our thoughts in. And you know, we had a great prayer retreat last weekend, focusing on the 12 powers. And you know, as I say these 12 powers, and you know, these powers, I want you to re remember and realize that they're in us. They are us. As much as your blood is part of you and your breathing and your heart and your lungs and your liver, these powers make up who we are. And as I re go through these 12 powers, I want you to see which one is resonating with you this morning. Is it life? Is it imagination? Is it dominion? Is it faith? Is it love? Is it order? Is it will? Is it strength? Is it wisdom? Is it understanding? Is it elimination? Or is it zeal? So as you take a breath in and you blow it out, I want you to let your thoughts rest on the one power that's resonating most with you this morning. And maybe it's a power that you're over-utilizing in your life, or maybe it's a power that you're under-utilizing in your life. And you're seeking to find the balance. And as you take a breath in again and blow it out, just focus on that power. Whatever it may be, just focus on that power. And just meditate on it for a moment as we go into the silence. Come back to this moment. Bring with you the realization that you are the living embodiment of not only that power that you thought of, but of all the power. And we give thanks for this realization, for this knowledge and this understanding that we have the power to create the life that we love, of service, giving joy and fulfillment. And so it is, and so it is. Amen. Whatever I do, Whatever I dream, whatever I decide to be, the answer is you. Whatever I see, whatever the questions be, so why would I fight and why would I cry? And why would I worry still? I just open my arms and open my eyes and follow you, my God, until you are nearer to my heart, nearer to my soul. Nearer to my life, never let me go. Oh, 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 nearer to my heart, show me what to do. Oh, God, to be nearer to you. Oh, God, to be nearer to you. There was a part of me that I just wanted to go ahead and just stay put where I was at to do meditation. <laughs> um, so as we uh, come to this time of our service, the, our opening meditation, I invite you to just close your eyes if you feel called to. Exhale. 
Breathe in. Maybe wiggle a little bit and get comfortable how you're sitting, feeling your body, feeling your, where your feet are, if they're planted on the ground or one leg crossed over the other, feeling the circulation, the idea of the breath circulating through the body temple, breathing in and exhaling. And I was inspired by the idea of the 12 powers. As Travis went through those 12 powers, I'd like you to recall that particular power that resonated for you. And maybe they all resonated that I want, to, I want all of them right now. And as we know, it's easier to climb the mountain one step at a time. So taking that one power, that is, yes, this is the one that calls me the most at this moment. And at this moment in time, as we know, ask and you shall receive. I ask that I, not me as an individual, but I as the collective I in this room, that I seek the guidance to be that power, to embrace that power, that that power comes to me through the awareness of my thoughts and my feelings. I release any struggle, any thoughts or ideas that hinder that power of the divine essence and presence that is with me, that is me. I let it go. And I invite you to exhale. And on your inhale, Breathe in that power. Breathe it in. As God breathed life into Adam. Breathe that power, breathe that life of that power into every cell. And exhaling and breathing. And knowing that as I exhale, all the struggle, the strife, the not good enoughness, whatever the unworthiness, whatever it is that hinders that power to be eliminated with this breath and inhaling the divine essence and knowing that as I inhale and I give life to this power that I get clarity, I receive clarity I receive wisdom that is embodied in this power. I stay tuned to the divine essence and presence that is my very being. I know. Ask and you shall receive. And I ask for this guidance to fully take control all of my being to be me to be the light that shines forth as this power breathing that power in giving life to it knowing that it is life in the body temple
with deep gratitude and appreciation for this moment in time for the moment in time of every step that I take every step that we take every breath that we breathe the acknowledgement and the awareness of the up-leveling of our clarity, of our wisdom, of our knowingness, of who we truly are. The divine essence and presence of the Most High. I invite you to take another deep breath and exhaling and breathing in and exhaling at your unique rhythm the rhythm of the divine breathing ah. and when you're ready I invite you to rub your hands together and open your eyes Sandy Groves wanted to put some slides together for this song, so you might want to watch the PowerPoint as we perform this song, because it's kind of cool. If I could look down on this path I walk, and somewhere up high I could see the crooked road that I have come. I walk to smile and sorrow, I walk a mile with joy, and now I'm less afraid of being alone. For every tear I've cried, there's a smile that I have run. For every mile I walk, there's a lesson I learn. I'm not lost. I am exploring Life is an adventure of enjoying Though I may not know where I'm going I am not lost I am exploring I am not lost I am exploring People choose to live their lives on quiet avenues While others find a place in a parade Some like me are seekers, we take less traveled roads Believing we can find a better way And though I get discouraged, I won't be turning back I have grown as my compass and faith as my mind I'm not lost I am exploring Life is an adventure worth enjoying Though I may not know where I'm going I am not lost I am exploring, I am not lost, I am exploring. All of us are headed for the same destination, so why not blaze a trail that's got imagination? Well, I'm not lost, I am exploring. Life is an adventure worth enjoying Who I may not know where I'm going I am not lost, I am exploring I am not lost, I am exploring I am not lost, I am exploring
Julie Gonzalez. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. Good morning. good morning. It's so good to be here. As you know, my theme song when I'm here is like, it's so good to be with you. I love all the things you say and do. <laughs> um, it is good to be here. I love being here at Unity. I love being in Little Rock. Um, uh, I, about 10 years ago, or actually, no, I haven't been here that, I haven't, well, maybe it has been 10 years that I had, I found this briefcase in um, Hot Springs, and it was, uh, uh, it had um, CCLR, and it, um, I took it home, and I was in my practitioner studies at the time, and I thought, Christ consciousness of Little Rock. <laughs> <laughs> and so I still have that briefcase and I use it all the time and I just and I think about I think about you being here in Little Rock when I'm in Hot Springs and that this you know we hold that space of the consciousness of who we truly are um, as uh, some of you no, my, my name is Susan Julie Gonzalez, and I am a religious science practitioner. I'm starting my 11th year as a licensed practitioner this November, this month, yeah. So that's, um, it's exciting. It's exciting to um, continue the study. And that's what it is. It's to continue the study. It's um, the study of the continual growth that we have. And we all have this, right? We have, we're at this uh, place in life where we experience our experiences and sometimes it may feel like we're experiencing the same thing over and over. But as long as we're doing the practice of creating a, an awareness within ourselves of who we are, that we up level and we move up into the realm like the eagle flies, right? He starts up and he catches the wind and he goes up, up, up and higher and higher. She um, catches that wind and we, and that is, that is what this is. It's a practice and we're, whether we're aware of it or not, we're experiencing it. Whether we're experiencing our consciousness at every level of our existence, whether we want to acknowledge it or not. Um, remembering our wholeness, I uh, wanted to share with you the definition, remembering, have in or able, be able to bring to one's mind an awareness of someone or something that one has seen, known, or experienced in the past. Um, and when I read that, I thought that was interesting. It was, uh, it reminded me of that, uh, uh, that story of the little boy who uh, went to his brother's crib and he said, Jimmy, Jimmy, tell me, tell me what God looks like. I'm starting to forget. Have you, have you heard that? And so it's in, within us, we have that idea of who we are when we're babies if, if we look at a child, a newborn, they're just, they're just there and they're this beautiful little creatures and you, my granddaughter who's three, she's, you know, so just so there and so present and nothing, you know, she falls off the chair, it's just like, oh, and she goes on her way. It's not, so, and let, you know, unless they get hurt, she had broken her leg and that took a little longer for her to really get moving and on her way. But, um, you know, and so do we remember who we are? And remembering our wholeness. The state of forming a complete and harmonious whole unity. The state of being unbroken or undamaged. The wholeness, of, they use the, the wholeness of the building is exceedingly well preserved. Are we remembering our wholeness? That essence of who and what we are is well preserved in the body temple, the building that carries spirit around, that allows everyone to see our divinity through the temple that we are, each and every one of us, all of us. And it doesn't matter whether they have beliefs 
that are different than ours, whether they're political, religious, philosophical, cultural beliefs, whatever it may be, we're all walking and being at our true essence, that divinity. The adjective comprising the full quantity, amount, extent, number, without diminution or exception, entire, full, or total. And so, with that one, are we accepting the wholeness, the fullness of being created in the image and likeness of God? As I was thinking about this talk, created in the image and likeness of God, our wholeness, no matter what we're experiencing at any moment in time, that we're created in the image and likeness of God, that every single aspect of life is in harmony with the divine law of our thinking. Ernest Holmes says, life is an infinite energy coupled with a limitless creative imagination. It is the invisible essence and substance of every visible form. And so in our thinking process, what are we imagining about ourselves? Even in those moments where life may not be very pleasant. I shared with Jeannie the other day that um, maybe it's yesterday. <laughs> the other day, sometimes time just like, when, when, when did that happen? Um, yesterday, that uh, in the recent past, my house was broken into, and um, there's still a little bit of work, some emotion for me to go through on this. Um, the jewelry was taken, electronics, um, the stuff, easily grabbed things. Um, were taken and my computer and my external hard drives were taken and um, two of them so that was about 10-ish years worth of work uh, both writing um, photography some of you know that I photograph portraits of trees so I had gotten a, about that same time had a, a I can't. I got a digital camera, so everything was stored on there, and I was, and I was, and I was. The digital images. Fortunately, I have. And Viktor Frankl. Are you familiar with Viktor Frankl? And in his book, he wrote that when he was in the concentration camp, that they could take everything away from him physically, but they could not take away who he was. He. They could not take away his essence. And so with this, and, and we all have some sort of loss in our life. I mean, we're, you know, we experience life. And so with this, I thought, you know, there was that, ah. <laughs> and then I thought, I have over 10 years of negatives. I have hard copies. I don't have all the stuff that I typed out. I was, I was getting very organized and, and putting everything in folders and finding these little pieces of writings that I had and putting them and typing them and then throwing the, out the hard material. Because they were just, my, my ex-husband, while we were married, he'd call me La Papelera because I had papers everywhere. I mean, I, La Papelera, the, you know, the, the paper woman. <laughs> and I, I just had paper everywhere. And so I thought, well, I'm going to like get rid of some of this paper. So I started organizing it all. And so with this, with this loss of stuff and even the hard drives and the computer is stuff. And what I have is my essence. What I have is the work that I have created new since then. I have what's in here. I have the love for what I love to do. And it was timely that Jeannie asked me to come and speak. Russ asked me a couple of months ago. And then Jeannie's asked me to come and speak. And it's just, this is what I love. 
And if we focus on what we love, that creates a vibrational tone within our bodies, yes. And so, you know, I, I was asked, what, a girlfriend, I had lunch with a girlfriend, and she asked me, well, how do you, and a lot of people, friends, previously, that she did, just learned about it, but it asked me, well, how do you see that break-in as your spiritual consciousness? And, and I say this, and I, I, it's not on the list to bring. Usually things get off topic. It's not on my, on my list here. But I bring this to share this with you. What I came with after my prayer and meditation, I had 10 years of work on those, on those hard drives. Those are my gifts and talents that I've been given, the ideas from the divine. And they weren't getting out there as often as they could have. They weren't going out. I was... I have been thinking about paying the mortgage, paying this, you know, doing this other kind of work. And even though I know this stuff that I have these gifts and talents that I can be doing this and where there's a will, there's a way where God is, if I'm given this, then I know that there is a possibility to create. There is that to have all needs and requirements met. So I invite you to take a look at your gifts and talents and how you're sharing those gifts and talents. Um, I was listening to, uh, and I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce her last name, Prima Chodra. Prima Chodra. And she was talking about how we have this feeling within us, you know, something shows up in our life and we have that tinge. There's a tinge that happens that we don't quite like or we might see we might see we say something to someone and there's something comes up on their face that it's like oh i touched a string there and so when we have that with in our daily walk whatever it may be where we're experiencing we're not the wholeness we're not the image and likeness of god we're not the fruit of the spirit we're not the love joy peace patience goodness kindness gentleness faithfulness the self-control that we need or desire to be the 12 powers of man and i wish i knew those things that i can rattle them off like i can the fruit of the spirit but travis go ahead and rattle them off uh, life, uh, life imagination dominion <laughs> I didn't mean to put you. <laughs> All of those, yay, thank you, thank you. All of those vibrate in the same vibrational tone. Right, they all are vibrating in the fruit of the spirit tone, that same tonal range. And there may be moments where we're feeling that we're not being it to the level that we desire to be. So the invitation is to be with that feeling of not being it for that moment and asking for the guidance to be that. On the way in, I heard a, a song of being uh, the, the, the salt and the light of the earth. And I was thinking that when we're living our purpose, when we're being in the wholeness of our divine selves, that we're the salt, and the salt flavors the food. When we are engaging in our community, when we're engaging with our friends and family, when we're engaging with ourselves, are we giving ourselves that flavor, that wonderfulness, the loving kindness? that which we desire to see in the world? Are we being that to ourselves? And when we look at the wholeness of remembering our wholeness and we can be that to ourselves, we can help and encourage each other. We can help and encourage each other to remember their wholeness because that's all we're here to do we're here to remember who we are and we're here to help each other remember who they are no matter what's going on no matter what's going on we're here 
to remind each other. In that, um, in that piece of life is infinite energy coupled with limitless creative imagination, which Ernest Holm talks about here, we have the opportunity to use the most powerful gift that we've been given, which is our imagination. Every single day, from the moment that your eyes are open, you're thinking about something. You're using your imagination. Are you using your imagination to bring yourself, to remind yourself about your wholeness? About the wholeness of your neighbor? The wholeness of our politicians? The wholeness of everyone. Are we using our imagination wisely and constructively and powerfully? I desire to use my imagination powerfully and constructively, not only for my good, because when I do it for my good, I do it for the good of all of us. When we're working with our highest and most holy good, it just moves on out. We're the light, the salt and the light of the earth. When we move in that place of using our highest and most holy imagination for our good, Ernest Holmes says, "If we're whatever it is that we're doing, as long as we're not hurting anyone else, do it." And just a reminder: Walt Disney built this great empire on <laughs> right. It's like imagination, <laughs> divine ideas, divine. I I'm so sorry. He kept on going, right? Yeah, and so it's um, important to remember our wholeness, to remember, to use our imagination. And I, um, we have, th there was something new that I saw with sign language. And um, I saw, I met this uh, woman in, in Fayetteville, her and her husband created, the, is it love? I love you. And so they did the love bubbles. And so I'll share love bubbles with you. <laughs> so let's do some love bubbles. Stand up if you can. And let's, so love and then, and just share those love bubbles all over. And I'll let Allie and Jordan know that I shared their love bubbles at Unity in Little Rock. And so, how fabulous. And so while we're standing up, I want to, Yes, you remember. Yay! Yeah. 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 You love it? Do you do it? I do on occasion. Okay, well, it's an 84 day challenge, right? Oh, wow. 84 days, because it takes 20, 23 to 24 days to break a habit, but it takes 84 days to create a new habit. You know, runners, they, if they run for 84, you know, for 84 days and they don't run, they're like, I, I gotta run, I gotta run. Or you know, my son-in-law, I gotta get to the gym, I gotta go to the gym. He's great, this habit of going to the gym. I gotta go to the gym, I gotta go, can you watch the lady? I gotta go to the gym. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but so, okay, the 84 day challenge. And this, I have to tell you, came from being here at Unity at Little Rock. It's expanded a little bit. I met Dr. Fielder and he added a little bit to it, but it came from being here at Unity of Little Rock when I was doing the Science of Mind classes. And in the Science of Mind, Ernest Holm tells us to give us that the teachers of old used to have, the mystics would have their students give themselves a hug. And so what we're gonna do, and, and it was to say wonderful, wonderful me. And so what we've, what, how it's expanded is it's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful me. We're gonna say that three times. I'm getting better and better every day in every way, thank you. And then we're gonna let it go with a ha 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 to expand, to lift that vibration, right? When we laugh, 
Laughter's the best medicine, and it lifts the vibration. Okay, so we're ready? So ready? Go. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful me. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful me. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful me. I'm getting better and better every day in every way. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. And I, and I hope that you take that with you. Yes? Say that one more time again. Yes, yes. And so that reminds me of uh, James Allen, one of the very first metaphysical books that I read, that when we have things that we need to get, I was going through a divorce and I just, I laid on the floor and I just wanted that floor to open up and swallow me. That's, and it's just like, oh, really? Now? It's like, really? <laughs> but, but that was the burning of having to let all of that go. The burning. So we do go through those periods of burning in our lives, but we come out to be the light. We endure it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And so um, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and close us out in prayer. And knowing that today is a good God day, that this is the day that the Lord has made. And I rejoice in this day. I rejoice in being here at Unity of Little Rock. I rejoice in knowing that each and every aspect of our lives is in perfect and divine order, no matter the appearance. Jesus said, judge not by appearances. And so we, oh, it's actually this day. I choose not to judge by the appearances, but to know and to trust that the power and the presence of God is right where I am at every moment in time, point in time, that there is absolutely nothing happening but God. The wholeness and perfection of God in every aspect of my life. And I claim this for myself and I claim this for you. I claim this for any appearances that may be happening in the world today, in California, that there is a big appearance happening. And I trust that the power and the presence of the divine is right there, that every aspect of life situations that are required, for we do have requirements in this body temple, that needs are met with ease and grace and compassion effortlessly. That that which we desire to see in the world as kindness and compassion and love and joy, the fruit of the Spirit, the 12 powers of man, that that which we desire to see in the world, that we become it, that we ask for guidance in our daily practice, in our meditation time, that we know we are wonderful, that we are created in the image and likeness of God, and that we hold strong to that. For God is the only thing happening in our lives. And I just say thank you, Father, Mother, God. Thank you, Unity of Little Rock. Thank you, everyone who is here, present at this moment. Thank you for going out into the world and being the salt, the light in your life, first and foremost. And shining it brightly. Shining it, being it consciously knowing the wholeness and perfection of God is right where we are. And I give thanks and I let go and I let God and so it is. Amen. Has anybody ever painted themselves into a corner? Anybody familiar with that expression? <laughs> How many people have done that? <laughs> so I kind of did that with this song. Uh, I don't even remember when I wrote this uh, several years ago. But uh, it doesn't have to be done between uh, Halloween and Thanksgiving, but it, it really needs to be. So 
I pull it out once a year and do it between Halloween and Thanksgiving. It's called Holiday Communion. Halloween has left us in its scary little way. So many of us love the joy it brings. For people in the USA, Thanksgiving is the next big day. A feast with friends and family, pumpkin pie, and other things. And it's great when we celebrate with family. And it's great when we celebrate with friends But I must confess this vision of an everlasting peace Where such holiday communion never ends December fast approaches, so many things to do, gifts to buy, and cars to send, and a concert at the school, Hanukkah or Christmas, different faiths with different names, the practices may differ, but in many ways the same, and it's great when we celebrate with family. And it's great when we celebrate with friends But I must confess this vision of an everlasting peace Where such holiday communion never ends Chestnuts roasting and pretty lights And the kids behave and play silent nights And we're sipping festive drinks and singing songs Candles burning and wishes filled, joy abundant, there's such goodwill, and we're sipping festive drinks and singing songs. And it's great when we celebrate with family, and it's great when we celebrate with friends. But I must confess this vision of everlasting peace because Christmas feels like hope to me peace on earth one family if we can't dream this time of year when might we dream at all So join your hands, let go of fear. Close your eyes and disappear to that place where two or more are one. Well, don't wait for Christmas Day. Don't wait for Christmas Day Don't wait for Christmas Day This year Thank you. Come on, I'm throwing it over and go back. We need to 
get this. I'm not a guy. I'm not sure exactly how we're doing this this early Sunday. But you know, I think we were listening to the Spirit talk. I realized how desperately needed is that message that we heard this morning in this community and in our world. And you know, unity is a little like it. It may be the only place in town in Pulaski County, maybe well, not in Arkansas, but in Pulaski County where this message, people can come and get this message of hope. Because you know, right now the world it looks like it's divided, and it's up to us to hold this vision of the one. And even though it appears that we're separated, that we're red and blue and white and left, we're truly all one. And so with those thoughts in mind, let's, let's reach in. You know, we have to support the work we do. Let's support that as we bring the offerings to your hand and to your heart and to your mind that say our blessing together. Divine love and be blessed and multiply us. All that I have. All that I hear and all that I see. Come on, everybody, let go and forgive. Don't hang on to the past. It's time to live. Time to set yourself free and let abundance flow. Time to set yourself free and let abundance flow. Say goodbye to fear. Hello to love, say goodbye to thinking you don't have enough. Won't you see the truth and let abundance flow? Won't you see the truth and let abundance flow? Well, it's so easy, anyone can try. All you have to do is see the light inside. Let the stress go and breathe easily. You got everything you'll ever need. Come on, everybody, let go and forgive. Don't hang on to the past. It's time to live. Time to set yourself free and let abundance flow. Time to set yourself free and let abundance flow. Time to set yourself free and let abundance flow. Songwriters going on as well. Um, I want to thank everybody who came yesterday to uh, do our pour over painting. They are still wet. So if you would stay for another week, that would be great. Um, and, and, they're, and they're in the back room. You ought to go look at them. It's beautiful, beautiful work. Yeah, really, very nice. That. It was a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. And Julia, Susan, Julie, I want you to know that I've been inspired that we are going to be officially changing WOW, which was supposed to stand for Women of Wisdom. It's now going to be Warriors of Wholeness. Because every month... Wow, I love that. There. We're going to hear talk. So, and everyone is welcome. You hear that, day? Everyone is welcome. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, and not to forget, Friday, Sounds of Unity, okay. with special guest, Trevor, Trevor, did I say that right? Yep. Trevor Blomquist. Who I believe they said is a recording artist from yeah. 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 yep. yeah. 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 right. And I want to encourage everybody to come out for that. You know, Laura Danley is such a strong supporter of Unity Church here. She does 
so much. And so let's come out. I know the last couple of months, it's kind of last month it was raining. The weather's been bad. So let's really have a good crowd to show up this Friday night to support them and support the sound of you. Invite your friends. Invite your friends. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and then finally, I'm the prayer chaplain. If anyone needs prayer support today, that is the foundation of Unity Church. So I will be up here available if anyone needs prayers. I'm, I'm here. Yay. Yeah. Thank you, Jerry. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and also, I want to mention, you know, it's been brought to my attention that there's a need. We need a volunteer who will take on the, uh, the uh, host, the uh, greeters, the greeters, thank you, the greeter usher team. We need someone who's willing to kind of be responsible for that, to get some other volunteers. And just, so if any of you are here and you're thinking there's something I'd like to dip my toe slightly into some unity service work, that's a really good place to start. It's, it's, it's very, it's, it, anyway, if you're interested in that, see, see Jeannie, or me, or Jeannie, <laughs> after the service. So. <laughs> That's right. So. All right, time to circle up. Time to circle up, everybody. Come on, let's gather around here. Come up here and... And if you will, I'm going to close this out before we start the song with a, just a brief verse. This is, uh, y'all know I'm a big Rudolf Steiner and just fan and I'm a study. So this is a verse from Rudolf Steiner. The wishes of the soul are springy. The deeds of the will are thriving. The fruits of life are maturing. I feel my destiny. My destiny finds me. I feel my star. My star finds me. I feel my goals in life. My goals in life are finding me. My soul in the great world are one. Now together, the light of God surrounds us. I am the light. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love. The power of God protects us. I am the power. The presence of God rushes over us. I am the presence. Wherever we are, God is and all is there. Let there be peace on earth. Let there be given. 